from the Dogfish Head Brewery, Sam Calagione. It's been a long, strange, but wonderful trip. From the Boston Beer Company, Jim Cook. Welcome back to the Friday Beer Buzz, Jim. Well, it's nice to be back. Uh, We're normally from Aberdeenshire in Scotland. From Brew Dog, we have James Watt and Martin Dickey. Welcome to the show, guys. The biggest mission today is just to make other people passionate about your state staff beers as we are. And now, the three-time winner of the Pennsylvania Association of Broadcasters Excellence in Broadcasting Award. The recipient of two Pennsylvania Associated Press Broadcasters Association Awards for Excellence. Promoting and advancing the craft and microbrew culture in Northeast PA. This is another edition of The Friday Beer Buzz. Yeah, Nancy's not here, but we sounded pretty good. Maybe we don't need her. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just being silly today. Uh, Lindo Sabatini is here. Bill is here from HuntForFest.com. I'm kidding, Nancy. I'm just totally kidding. Uh, she holds this ship together. As It's been a leaky ship this morning. I've had fun, but it's a leaky ship. Uh, the Friday Beer Buzz, powered by Sabatini's Pizza and Sabatini's Bottle Shop and Bar in Exeter. Sabatini's with the area's greatest selection of rare craft and imported beers, growlers. And growlers and 37 rotating drafts. Sabatini's Pizza and Sabatini's Bottle Shop and Bar, Wyoming Avenue. In Exeter, Lindo Sabatini, I just mentioned to you, my wife and I are doing a date at your place. It's a lunch date. She's starting, right. a, starting a new job. I'm excited for you. And she, well, I am very excited because <laughs> she, she's the one who brought up. She's like, I'm going to be in Wyoming. Is that close to? And she pulls it up. She's like, look, it's right down the road. Oh, it's there. It's there. So we're coming in. I won't tell you when because I don't want a crowd of people. You know, I bring nobody. <laughs> no, but we're, I'm excited. Next week. Are, we, are you going to do signatures? Are you going to sign? No, no, nobody wants that. Right. Not even credit card slips. I give you. I just won't sign anything. But <laughs> the thing's going good. Anything we need to know about up front here? Pizza beer. Pizza beer. Pizza beer. Very simple. Very simple. Very. It's, it's effective. It cuts through. I do like that. I remember it now. <laughs> Bill is here from mybeerbuzz.com. Good morning again, Bill. Good morning. Happy Friday. And uh, happy day after National IPA Day and happy International Beer Day. Wait, okay, so it's IPA Day then? That was yesterday. And then today is Inter International Beer Day. Two totally separate yep. days. Now, that seems very, is it selfish of IPA Day? to be like, oh, you have a day that we're going to go one day before you? Uh, it's a little I mean, selfish? You know how it is when you look at what the day is, if you search what, what, what is today's International Day. I mean, I think yesterday was International Tasty Cake Day or something like that. So, I mean, it depends. There are on a lot of days. days. Okay. All right, just wondering. But, yeah, so what, how did we celebrate the two of them? Just drink beer? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's pretty we're doing, much. We're doing the right thing today. They're doing the right thing today. Uh, there's tons of beer news up at uh, uh, mybeerbuzz.com, but they'll have some of it, maybe a question. I don't know what we got going on today. Let's just have fun, though. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Let, let's start it with the deer buzz. Uh, and this one's an interesting one. It's one I, I was actually aware of, so I didn't have to do a whole ton of research because it's a new product that's being used in a lot of IPAs, and I drink a lot of IPAs. The question is, what is phantasm? And that's P-H-A-N-T-A-S-M. And they're using it in beers uh, that are hoppy. And people, I think, think it is related to hops or that it is a variety of hop or something along that line. But it's actually a powder. And that powder is derived from New Zealand Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc grapes. So it comes out of the wine side of things. And it's rich in what they call biotransformative compounds. And I definitely had to look that up. Um, and they are field precursors that help hops produce fruity flavors. So in other words, it's an additive that you add to hops that make them develop uh, a little bit more fruity flavors in the beers. And they liken it to like MSG in, in food, that it's, it, it contributes to other flavors hmm. uh, outside of itself, if that sounds kind of weird. But in the end, and here's the business decision, um, you can substitute Phantasm for some of the hops, and in the end, from a business standpoint, it is cheaper than hops. So you can actually use less hops that are costly and use a little bit of this Phantasm. Uh, and, and for those asking, those home brewers asking, uh, it is added in the Whirlpool. So that's what Phantasm is. Um, I think we will probably feature at some point on the show, we'll feature okay. a beer that has Phantasm in it and see if we can actually tell. Um, I don't think I should. Have some... I was going to say, I don't think I should go here, but I'm going to say it anyway, because um, why not? Uh, so you're saying they can replace some of the hops with this. So and sometimes, so there's 
artificial and there's real phantasm and, and faked phantasm. Can men tell the difference? Oh. Johnny, no, don't even, don't even, don't even bother. Don't even. Yeah, you can hit me if you want. Yeah, no, uh, just a funny. Yeah. Um, no, it's it's, it's supposed to make them very much fruit forward, uh, and I okay. like the fruit forward IPA, so I don't mind it. So and again, if it saves the money and it it works out, and it's new, you know, who doesn't like new things? And as with IP, all things IPA, if it's new, people will buy it. Uh, we have some beer news. And we just have two pieces of beer news today. The first one comes from Rogue in Newport, Oregon, one of my favorite old school. They go way, way back with, with craft and microbreweries. They had a beer called Dead Guy. Dead and Guy? Dead Guy was around. Yeah, Dead Guy. Yeah. And it was around forever. It was an, an amber, um, very, very famous craft beer in the very beginning days of, of craft. Well, they are now converting that. They're going to keep the original beer, but they're converting into... Uh, brewing some other gear, beers dedicated to Dead Guy. So they're going to have Dead Guy IPA, which I think is cool. That is 7% ABV, 69 IBU, 12-ounce can. Dead Guy Pale Ale, I also think is cool, 5.5% ABV, 35 IPU, uh, IBU. And Dead Guy Pilsner, they're going into the lager end of the pool. Uh, and that one is 5% ABV. 34 IBU, and all of these are 12-ounce bands. So so watch for those. We're out ahead of that story, so I suspect yeah. we'll see those probably uh, either later this year or early 2023. And our last little piece of beer news comes from Stone Brewing in Escondido, California, and Richmond, Virginia. They are adding something called Violetta Iris Milkshake IPA, and that will be part of their one-batch dispatch series, and it will be a raspberry, blood orange, and vanilla IPA that hits 8% ABV, and it will be packaged in 16-ounce cans. And that is our breaking beer news of the day. As always, you can go to the breaking beer news tab on mybeerbuzz.com for more details. There's so much up there, Lindo. I sometimes will look for something, and I find other things and get distracted. I do go there and check it out from time to time. I mean, you do get lost, right? Oh, I, I most websites do that to me, but this one in particular, there's a lot of stuff. So, Bill, I know there's a lot of work that gets put into it. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad, glad, I'm glad you enjoy it. Um, <laughs> I will find have a full 14-page review sent to you by Thursday of next week. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Uh, Lindo from uh, Sabatini's Pizza and Sabatini's Bottle Shop and Bar. I'm having actually a, a date. I think I mentioned this. Did I mention it already? Yeah. Yeah, I already told you the story. I haven't even started drinking. It's yet. almost like I feel like you're inviting me on your date. You can come over. My wife likes Lindo's voice. So maybe that <laughs> she's a little. This is weird. I'm making it uncomfortable for everyone. Yeah, it's, it's a little weird. Sorry. Anyhow, well, she's we taking can cover it on next week's show, and and we can make it an event. We can all show up <laughs> you know, for, the, for the date. All right. Can you tell people what time it's going to be? And uh, I really don't know. Lunch. Yeah, time. Everybody can come over and lunch time. I don't know. <laughs> Table number, bar seat. <laughs> uh, so what do we have today? We got two beers here in front of me. International Beer Day, right? Inter yes. So we figured we would go international and grab two beers uh, that most people probably haven't had, including myself on one of them. Oh, really? First time? Uh, first time. All right. And from countries that you don't really think of as possibly being beer countries. Uh, uh, Greenland? Nope. Iceland? Mm, <laughs> How about Lebanon? Oh, okay. And Kenya? Yeah. Okay, I mean, I don't. Yeah. Right. Did you taste the beers yet? No, which one should I try first? Uh, let's go with Tusker. Tusker, okay. So the first one is, is Kenya Tusker Lager. Um, it comes to us from East African Breweries, uh, and it is a 4.2% ABV and 100 calorie uh, lager. That's that's small amount of calories, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's, uh, it tastes yeah, kind of like a lightest. Well. Yeah, okay. I just wonder because it, it's a very thin, like a thinnish kind of. Not finish. Did you say finish or finish? Thin, like thin. it's thin. It's got like a thin kind of feel to yeah. it. Well, I, I, yeah. I've never been to Kenya. I'd imagine it's not cold there. So a lighter, a lighter drinking beer for the hot things, I think, would make a lot of sense. That does make a lot of sense. A little science. And these beer. guys have been around, been around for a long, long time. They've been around since 1922, and the, the origin of the name of the beer, Tusker, is is in memoriam to their founder, George Hurst. Um, who founded Ken Kenya Breweries Limited originally, was actually killed by an elephant during a hunting expedition in 1922, shortly after he established the brewery. 
And that iconic elephant logo, they say, continues to act as a national symbol representing integrity, national pride, and, of course, great tasting beer. I'm not, I'm not going to say this for sure, but I think they hated him as a boss. Oh boy. No, I'm being serious. Like he got mauled to death by an elephant, and they're like, "Make that the logo." And they put the picture of the elephant like, yeah. rather, rather than him. It was like an honor. It's like we're calling it Tusker, but he was tusked to death. Uh, I thought you were going to say they they didn't like him, and they said, "Hey, we should go out on this elephant expedition." No, no, you know, like, like the like, honor was to honor the of Omaha. Oh man, <laughs> what's this other beer now? I'll this... wave in the bunker while Jim confronts the angry lion. Poor <laughs> <laughs> The other one, like I said, is from is from Lebanon. This okay. one is called. They actually just call the beer Lebanese Brew. The brewery is nine. I guess it's nine six one. And uh, yeah, nine sixty one beer. I've never I've never had this beer before. Um, another place where I think it's probably not really cold all the time. <laughs> so yeah, nice and light and easy <laughs> drinking. They're very similar. These two. I definitely prefer the the second one. This one this one's more my speed. Yeah, I like the second one better myself. Uh, but would you say they're very similar styles? Well, they are. They're both uh, they're both lagers. Um, the Lebanese yeah. beer being a pilsner, also real light. I'm just wondering. Yep, with the, the Lebanese brew is a, a an American light lager or pilsner. It's a little bit hoppier, uh, and the the Tusker is a, a technically a pale lager. Um, they are both very similar. ABV on the Lebanese is 4.3 percent ABV, so it's just slightly slightly different than Tusker. And this one, 961 Beer, has an interesting story. They opened in July of 2006 in Lebanon amidst, amidst their, their revolutionary war. Um, and they actually had a visitor who was sort of uh, behind the scenes sending them ingredients because they could not get ingredients to brew the beer. Wow. Uh, it was founded, like I said, in 2006 by Mazen Hajar. Um, and he had a partner, again, from, from the Netherlands that was sending him ingredients to try to get things going. This beer does use noble hops, so it will be similar to a lot of the international European Euro lagers as well. Usually, I've said this, and you guys know this, I'm not a big fan of like when it's really hoppy, but I feel like the hops work really well in this versus the other one, which seems almost a little more, it's less hoppy, it's a little smoother. This one's brighter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great way to say it. Yeah, I agree 100%. Yeah. I prefer the second one much better. Sorry, Tusker. It's not a competition, but, I, I, you know. I actually tasted both of these beers on a cruise. And, and you know, they are on a cruise. They always have an odd selection of things at the bar. And, and I was able to taste both of these and a few other international beers uh, at the same time. So, Well, that's, that's, uh, that's weird. <laughs> both of these it, were on the same was. boat. <laughs> I mean, so they, yeah, I get what they you're saying. Depending on where that ship went, they might have picked different things up. And, you know, that's kind of neat. Yeah. They were, they were, uh, and, and in the end it was, you could get a, a peach margarita for $1.50 and then a Guinness was like $9. <laughs> so, so you drink peach margarita. You know what direction we head. Yeah, you know what direction I headed. it. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with frozen drinks on vacation or even in your home. No. Yeah, I don't care. I don't care what you say. I'll put an umbrella in a little, I'll put a little umbrella in this beer if you want me to. I'll do that. I don't care. I have no shame in the game. It works. Yeah. <laughs> Um, 961 does go out of their way to say they don't use any additives, that they use no corn, no rice, nothing along that line. And Tusker makes a point of saying they use 100% African ingredients, uh, barley from the savannah and the Maasai Mara, and spring water from the Aberdeer Mountains. And I'm sure you're familiar with the Aberdeer Mountains, right, uh, uh, Well, sure. I mean, after you hike, uh, <laughs> they're, an, they're an average hike. Uh, but thankfully, at the end of it, yeah, you're like, Tusker's beer is here. We can all chill and enjoy yeah. it. But, hey, um, water. we got to wrap this up. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, fun, as always. And uh, uh, Tusker, and uh, Le it's just called Lebanese Brew? Lebanese Brew. 961. Yep. All right, and they're available at Sabatini's? For sure. They are. Bill, mybeerbuzz.com. Go there for beer news. Have a good weekend. We'll talk to you next week. Uh, yep. Happy Friday. Peace out. And, uh, yeah, next week we'll do this again. Linda, thank you. And I will see you on Thursday on my date. Hands off. She's taken. Remember? I don't know why I'm making it this so weird. I'm such a weirdo. Anyway, it's uh, the Friday Beer Buzz. Thank you for being here. And uh, we'll do this again next week. Friday Beer Buzz powered by, again by Sabatini's Pizza, Sabatini's Bottle Shop, and Bar at Exeter with the area's greatest selection of rare, craft, and imported beers, growlers and growlers, and 37 rotating drafts, Sabatini's Pizza, Sabatini's Bottle Shop, and Bar, Wyoming Avenue in Exeter. Have an awesome weekend. Have an Thank awesome you. weekend, Lindo. Bye, Bill. The Friday Beer Buzz, bringing good beers and good people together.